McKinney. Hello and welcome to Global Multimedia Online TV with me, your presenter, Trifina Elizabeth Coca, and you are watching Global Multimedia Online TV. Subject to the challenges and health effects of poorly maintained roads, youth living in Wapolo community at Tire Beast has amalgamated to help mend the menaces that borders around road accidents and poor road construction. This, however, is in a drive to ensure youth involvement in the developmental drive, even when resources are limited. Our reporter Desmond Alfred Jonathan Farmer has more. Roads and means of transportation make a crucial contribution to economic development and growth and brings important social benefits. Poorly maintained roads constrains mobility, significantly raise vehicle operation costs, increase accident rates in the associated human and property costs, and aggravate isolation, poverty, poor health and illiteracy in rural communities. The intervention of vibrant well thinkers to mend the wounds in the hearts of people living in poorly maintained roads highlights the economic and social importance of regular road maintenance and recommend ways to achieve sustainable road maintenance with scarce public resources. After many concerns raised by people, vehicle drivers and bike riders plying the road leading to the Ropolon and John Ture community, youths of the Koindu Ataya base has galvanized to help solve the problem of poor road that leads to the Ropolon and John Ture community respectively with support from the Youth Councillor Ibrahim Nelson Kamara. According to one of the members at the Ataya base, Mohamed S. Jalo, he discussed their inspiration to intervene in the ugly situation faced by bike riders and vehicle drivers along this path. Ataya base will get people reputable among this very association. We see them and see the road in Puelwa, and we see how people really struggle to come down the bike, they fall down too much. They will total fit say necessary for them to come and make sure say, we do some community mobilization with we will at least get some money and we have to make our own contribution financially to ensure say, we move forward. In close interviews with some of the youths living in the community, they registered concerns which mostly has to do with the challenge of living around poorly maintained roads. They also submitted their thanks and appreciation to the lead councillor who funded the whole process. I will feel happy for that because that will cast it off. Anything we say they do for me, we will support them. We now have you to manage this area as we Oh, this is not the way you want to do it. You guys don't know how to do it. You guys don't know how to do it. You guys don't know how to do it. So go do it now. So who can see the young man today say they can't help you for making and make this road as you. We did it tomorrow. We support them. Councillor Ibrahim Nelson Kamara of Ward 123 Constituency 038 is the youth councillor who joined the proactive youth and he speaks more on this. Of course, challenges no we ever done. Government no we do all because he plenty. Before this time, we they get RMFA. When a road maintenance fund, where they come, and then council stay. And equally, we can get a small couple we can come to council for work on with energy so we can handle them. But because they're not there, we use we own expertise, we own ideas. Say we not go sit wait for government and ibokuna government aid. Then get a lot of issues for tackle and order, and then get their own flashy project where I feel say then they work on. But we not go wait say past government kind of wait. I make with me on vibrant youth and the youth chairman and the attire, the quendu attire base. We demand fit and community uh, resident the way they live in this community. Say. Let's take up the lead and do what we feel say. We go do, but we will still encourage and talk to government. Let them consider we community say we got a deplorable road stem. What we feel say whatsoever we come, let government consider we. For global multimedia online TV daily home news, Desmond Alfred Jonathan Farmer reporting. University of McKinney final year's cohort observed strict preventive measures of COVID-19 pandemic after the long putting on hold of lectures. The administration, however, wants to fast track and complete the process of all final year students, 
and then meet up with the next year's academic calendar. Our reporter Edna Ekane will tell us more. Since the open of external examination classes in schools, final years go out in universities, church, mosques, and many other sectors after the long putting on hold of activities to observe the strict preventive measures of COVID-19 pandemic. The University of McKinney is one among the many universities in the country and the first private university in the Northern region. Global Multimedia Online TV paid an unannounced visit to assess the compliance rate of the laid-down rules and pronouncements by the government of Sierra Leone with regards to precautionary measures put in place. The use of face masks, washing of hands, and social distancing in sitting accommodations during lectures is fully observed. Students express how classes and the situations have been like in the midst of COVID-19. Personally, I do feel good, you know, because it's for our own good. As a citizen of the country, we have to observe the IPC measures and also the social distance. We feel good about it because we think it's for our own safety. Though not easy, as you can hear from my voice, I feel choked up now with the face mask, but we have no option for now. So we do feel good and we are managing to adhere to what government have said. In an interview with one of the lecturers, he explained the challenges they have been facing to make sure the process goes smoothly. It's easy because this is not a normal situation. Uh, so we, we do our best by enforcing, you know, repetitively saying it over and over to students. Um, it's difficult for them. Some will complain about the breathing. Uh, some talk about the inconvenience, but we tell them that this, uh, this is not a normal situation, but we need to abide to the rules of the uh, COVID-19. And so it has not been easy. Uh, looking at the temperature is hot, and uh, we try to make sure that our students comply. But what I say is that we ought to keep on, keep on reminding them that which is an extra duty from the lecture that we have. And we always try to remind them also, remind them about the spacing, about sanitizing and washing their hands and soap wherever we are. So it's an additional job for us uh, to keep on repeating for them to abide to the rules of the COVID-19. Nevertheless, their duty to keep the students safe, giving them the right materials needed for their studies, and trying their best to meet for the next year's academic calendar is the university's topmost priority. There's another item that is better, like this one. Oh, Reporting for Global Multimedia Online TV class. Daily Room News, I'm Edna Kane. Muslims at the police barracks mocks expresses the challenges they face in celebrating Eid al Adha, one of the most popular ceremony in Islam. Unfortunately, the day was not celebrated as expected due to COVID-19. Our reporter Victoria Kamala now reports. Eid al Adha, also known as Dunke Sali, normally celebrated every year by Muslims across the world. In remembrance of the day Ibrahim had wanted to kill his son Ishmael. But today, COVID-19 has changed the narratives of this celebration. However, we had an interview with Muslims at the police barracks mosque on the challenges they faced as they couldn't celebrate the day as supposed. We caught up with the assistant interpreter Sheku Kamara, who explained the challenges they faced regarding the preventive measures, the use of face masks, and that of the social distancing. Because one, we're not used to the face masks, and not to everybody used to the face mask. Some people they come actually pass them and say go, go count the face mask. You say, hey, but I don't come on a distance now. So they pass you make that provision. This okay, I get another spear. You hold this one because I knew one. Or some go say you go bye bye and say okay, the best thing, never mind, you don't cast as early as possible. We go withdraw the time a little bit, 
But when I go count and fix back, now one of the challenges. And also, the other challenges are the social distances. Because we try to do as the best as possible for make a good social distance, but it's damn too difficult. Because the people can plenty, and we see say the mock is small. So the only way we go able to see say we go able to abide by the social distance is to follow pretty quick and everybody scatter. The secretary of the mosque, Maya Makamara, also explained how COVID-19 has affected their daily activities as a mosque. And this is what she has to say. No, there are no option. Well, any two governments say now go do. Like me, so I open a social welfare. So we've put there any option for say this nine for day, nine for day. If the government back say this nine for day, and nine for day. So people are all and take the rules there. You see, they obey the rules, what the government say. And we all who don't go behind, picking and don't go behind, we think they already do, we don't go behind, you see. Right now, this is here, once now, let this is here done. <laughs> Global Multimedia Online TV Daily World News, Victoria Kamara reports. Following a relief in the too many restrictive measures to help contain the spread of the COVID 19 pandemic, the government of Sierra Leone organized the first external examination in the midst of COVID-19, which counts more than 4,800 pupils who write the National Primary School Examination. Our reporter, Handela Mark Williams, was part of this and now tell us more. Sierra Leone has been in a state of emergency since the declaration of COVID-19. Schools and many other places were shut down due to the pandemic. As education being the country's top priority, the government of the day under the leadership of His Excellency the President, Gita Brigadier Julius Madabio, allowed pupils in external classes to reopen and take external examination, but with a key focus on maintaining the social distances measures and the use of face masks. However, this statement has not been followed with the very first external examination MPSA. Global Multimedia was in Dunkali the district to get a views on how the examination process going and if the rules and the regulation of the pandemic have been taken into consideration to know and track intelligence of any mark practice against the examination rules. Government secondary schools for girls Matora was one of the centers for the MPSA examination. In a closing interview with a representative from the Ministry of Education, he explained the conduct of the exam and vet out their challenges faced. This morning uh, we just received materials, COVID materials, ma materials for the COVID and also pencils, school materials for the kids as well, like pencil sharpener and others. The ministry brought them to us, to the school, to distribute to the school peoples. And in short, it's just cordial, um, especially like the parents. Of course, uh, sometimes we just have to try you coin the language so that they can move far off the center especially when they always try to enter into the classes even at the time when the exams is about to start they always want to talk to their kids and also heads of the schools the head teachers they always try to come into the campus but we try as much as possible to control the examination try as much as possible the examination work perfectly as the ministry directed us to do. Mrs. Fatou B. Kamara is the head of the VEI Examination Center and she explained their successes so far in the conduct of a my practice free examination. It is peaceful even though when you look around you see the head teachers and headmasters and parents wanting to storm but we have with the presence of the police we are able to keep them off the exams as you can see now, the exams area, but uh, as on a whole, the conduct is peaceful, the invigilators are doing their job and we have a lot of monitors and uh, supervisors from DECOVAC, Ministry of Education and uh, you name it, WAEC, we have them all around, they are all with us helping to conduct the exams. As we continue supervision, we engage other supervisors and these we are their respond. Well, in all, we have uh, 14 schools at the lower school and 13 at the upper school. Uh, we have 961 candidates for this center that are taking the exams in both the upper and the lower school. 
and therefore, as you can see, for the lower center, the exams is uh, safe. The atmosphere is uh, conducive. Okay, there is no form of malpractice taken on in all of the classrooms. Global Multimedia Online TV Daily Room News, Andela McWilliams reporting. This is all we have time for in today's Daily Room News. Thanks to our producers and editors for a job well done. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Facebook page and all of our social media accounts to get first-hand information about happenings in and out of the country. Thanks for watching and have a pleasant night.